Oh, to say I'm a little bit excited is, uh, is an understatement. M103. Oh, you remember those? Number one E plus. Oh, something's arrived. Um, which signals a change from the design we had in 2015-16. Let's go and take a look. What have we got in here? I think we can all guess. It's the KS S18, first in the UK. It's not really in there. Already taken out of the box, but only just. And so I glanced my eyes on it and I think what an absolutely an amazing looking piece of equipment. Now, when you take it out and you pull it out of the box, it extends the suspension out and it doesn't fit on a stand. But if you flatten it back down again, it does. Well, at least enough to stand it here to do this little video. Now this is, we're in shutdown, we're in lockdown. So I've come in specifically to pick this up and to give you a quick video review on my initial thoughts on the KSS-18. I just want to run through a couple of things. This has suspension. How amazing is that? It's progression forward. King Song and Emotion have brought two suspension units to market. The V11 and we've got the KSS18. I love the fact that there's development going on. People are pushing forward, trying to get these wheels better. We've got to remind ourselves of that. I know they're expensive, but they could just stop the scooter market much bigger than this. So focusing down, putting development into these, thumbs up from me to actually trying something bold. Now they have had to reduce the battery size slightly, so it's just over a thousand watt hours. So the KS16X, um, sort of similar size in terms of the uh, actual body, I mean the wheel's bigger, but it's the same sort of size as 1,554 watt hours, to put it in context. So you're not gonna be stonking the range on this one. But of course, you've got the introduction of the suspension unit. Now this should be awesome for those of you who ride on cobbled streets from Victorian times, or you uh, do a lot of off-roading, obviously. A couple of points worth mentioning though, is the fact that you've got more complexity. There's more complexity built into something that should give you a slightly better result uh, when off-roading, hopefully, we'll find out. Um, so you've got all these linkages that of course are gonna be no two ways of saying it, they're gonna be more maintenance, higher maintenance. Definitely, it's gonna happen at some point, just like full suspension mountain bikes, you're gonna get dirt ingress in there eventually. It doesn't matter if they're closed bearings or not, eventually you will have to service those. So it becomes a serviceable part. So putting this complexity in does mean you're gonna have servicing required, which is a good job because Speedy Feet do servicing, uh, speedyfeet.co.uk, so go along and also smash the like button for the fact that we do servicing. We don't currently because we're in lockdown, uh, so there's no one here. It's empty, still shipping out though. You can pre-order this on that note, uh, speedyfeet.co.uk, go and look for it, pre-order. We've only got a few left in the very first batch we got coming in. This is a demo model that we paid a lot of money to air freight in, so we can bring this video to you. So it's quite expensive, this. Always is with these unboxings. This area here are the struts. Also, as you might see in this little video, is got a bit of oil on it, which is a course for the lubrication uh, to make sure it all runs smoothly. And what does that mean? That means it's gonna be a magnet for dust. There's no cover, nothing, no way, even if you did have a, some sort of see-through cover on this, that you've got to keep that dust from hitting on there. Now, just like a full suspension mountain bike, how weird that we're trying to correlate these thing, two things together, you have to keep that clean. So the cleaner you keep this, the better. Now, one little tip is don't just wash it down. Certainly don't pressure wash it, which you'd never do with a wheel anyway, unless you're completely crazy. But you might be a first time buyer. Um, make sure you just keep that clean. Now, a wet wipe or a rag of some description will, um, and we will also be selling on the site some lubricant for suspension. And so you can clean it all off. You drop some of that on there, and as it goes up and down, it actually pulls it into there and keeps it all nice and clean and pulls the dirt back out again. Um, so that will be on the site at some point. We're talking with the supplier at the moment. So actual looks, I just think it looks absolutely amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful machine, isn't it? Um, I don't really want to say much more than that. We've got the trolley handle here. So you can't just pick this thing up. There's, there's no way you can just pick it up. So you need to press the button like this. And I'm not going to pick it up because it's come off stand. It locks into that position and then you can pick it up which is how I got it out of the box in the first place. 
So there is a little bit of extra there, action there, shall I say. Um, so nice big foot plates, not really gonna say a lot more. I can see here my initial thoughts about this strip that runs along here. Kind of seen that getting quite damaged. We'll find out, who knows? It kind of looks like it runs a bit low. I mean, it's high in comparison to what you'd normally expect, but you can see the foot plate levels there and this is below that tight in. Nothing that catastrophic because a lot of wheels have a body that runs around there anyway. So at least just under the foot plate. We'll see how it goes. That's just an observation. Dust ingress is gonna be the number one factorino in the whole thing, I think, for me. Um, but we will see. What comes in the box is a shock pump because you now need to inflate the shock, of course. So we will have a little look at that. We'll inflate it to the recommended pressures, have a play about with it, see how it goes. Um, on the back, of course, it's talking about this is not King Song's product. It's from some generic company that makes shock pumps. Um, and so we're going to have to inflate the shocks and then take it out. The charge area and USB is in the front here. So that's where we go with that. So you've got a single port there to plug in a 2.5 amp charger. So it comes with the 2.5 amp charger, which we sell as an upgrade for your standard models, which are 1.5. You've got 2.5, so you get slightly quicker charging out of it. One amp, which is quite considerable really in comparison to the standard charger. You plug that in, um, you're gonna have a quicker charger, but it comes as standard on this. So that's pretty sweet. How this white body stands up over time. I am not going to make any guesses on this. We will see what it looks like. If it was me, I'd be going for black. I love the stealth look. Um, so I'd be going black. But this white, fine. Don't care at the moment. This is to get a test in for you guys in the UK. A real life review of the whole thing to see pros and cons, if there are any. Um, well, hopefully there's pros. And then we will report back. Well, actually I will, because I'm doing this on my lonesome. So I'm going to stick it on charge and get out there. No fancy cuts and things like this. This is gonna be quite raw, this video. So yeah, let's get on with it. So the pad came off, should be on there. A uh, little, little bit of lack of glue, I think. I've had a bit of a hands-on with it now and so I can give some impressions so I've done about 20 miles on the machine so far how have I been getting on with it well initially so getting onto the machine for the first time felt quite strange the foot plate position is a little bit higher up than you used to and what I found is on a camber because your foot position is higher your pivot point of where the tire is touching, so where your feet are to where your tire is touching on the floor, that pivot point, you're slightly higher up. So you've got a bit more leverage to actually push the wheel down a camber. So initially I had to change my riding style a little bit because I wasn't used to hitting a camber and getting the wheel kick out. And that was because the leverage was just that much more, just a little bit more because you're slightly higher up. It actually, a bit more leverage can kick you out more on gravel. That was my first finding. So I had to adjust my riding style slightly to actually get the weight over the wheel. So if I was going in a camber like this, I'd put the weight over a bit more on the left foot plate, to dig that tire in back in that way. And I was able to compensate for that. So 
What I'm basically saying is your riding style is gonna change somewhat from what you're used to. So if you're used to riding a wheel, you're gonna get on this and think, oh wow, this is a little bit different to what I'm used to. Um, so be prepared for that, it is different. It's also different in the way that you handle bumps because obviously now you've got a stonking great big suspension unit sat there taking some of this impact. So if you're bracing yourself like you usually would do, there's a difference there. So it feels a bit different. Now initially when I got in, I thought, is this suspension actually helping me here? Is there an actual difference? Um, because I'm not sure, I didn't know if it overcomplicated things whilst I was riding. I actually found, I let into a little secret, after the 1,000 miler, I've had back issues, lower back issues, since that 1,000 miler. And I think what they do is they stem from knees, basically. So my knee, from where you're twisting on that 1,000 miler, 10 miles a day, pretty 10 hours a day, pretty much, on the machine for 12, 13 days, that twisting on the foot plates without being able to shift your foot because they're gripping, actually put a twist in place, especially with the weight we were carrying. Um, and so this is actually helping that amazingly. There's less impact on the knees. And I'll show you a quick video clip now of jumping off a log to try and accentuate the impact and to try and give some feedback, some user feedback to what that's actually like in real life. So for the first 10 kilometers, you need to ride it at the set speed and then you can unlock the speed then. And I've unlocked this just at 24 miles an hour and I've been riding it around at 24 with the beeps at 24. There's a brand new King Song app to go with this, which is a great addition because the previous app was pretty bad. Now, we had some complications here. So when I got this at the box, could not inflate the lower chamber of the uh, rear shock. The shock, in this case. The, the shock has got an upper and lower chamber. Both of those need to be inflated and included in the box is a shock pump. Don't just use a standard pump, use a little shock pump that comes with it as well. There's a complication to pumping this up. So first of all, the upper chamber, which is the one where you need to put in, depending on your weight, about 200 to 250 PSI, around about that figure, stick it 200 and then move on from there. You need to have an understanding of how shocks work. So if you're thinking about buying this, go and have a look up how shocks work and sag and all this sort of business. You need to find that out pretty much for yourself. There is instructions for this, but go and find out what mountain bikers use and work on that principle. When you're pumping the upper chamber, at that point, you need to be putting weight on the machine. So either have a friend to stand on it, because what happens is the more you pump it up, the more the shock disappears inside the body. And so as you're pumping it, <laughs> you're getting the hose trapped from the pump inside the body. So you need weight on there to push that shock back out so you can get a full inflate basically. So the more you're pumping up, the more that shaft of the shock's coming out and disappearing, if you understand what I'm saying. So you need a friend to stand on it or you can stand on it back to front and lean over it and pump it up, which is what I did. I didn't have a friend to help, uh, but a lot easier if you do have a friend, you're not fighting this machine at all then to inflate it. The lower chamber, I had issues getting air into that. I did eventually successfully get 150 PSI in the, in the small chamber at the bottom. It's tiny, so it only takes a tiny little bit of air um, so put that 150 in there is what I did. The settings will vary. It's a great addition to have this shock on this wheel. It's amazing, really, for the off-road. It's great, but it does bring a level of complexity in terms of setup. Whereas before you could just get a wheel out of the box and it was the wheel you were riding, how it handled bar tire PSI and changing the tire and things like that. It was pretty uniform. You get the wheel out, you plonk it on the ground, you're good to go out the box, not an issue. Mess around tire pressures if you really want to, to get that little bit of difference. This is a monumental difference in how you set this shock up to how it's actually gonna act. And it is gonna take you trial and error to be able to actually overcome the obstacles in your way, shall we say, symbolic and literal objects, until you get that suspension set up exactly how you want it based on your rider weight. So it's similar, imagine it to how far, common question we get is how far will that wheel go per charge? And we don't know because it depends on the rider weight, the temperature outside and the terrain you're on, uh, your tire pressure and many other factors um, and how fast you're going, etc. Many other factors around that. So to give it an answer, nigh on impossible. Getting this shock set up exactly right can't give you a set PSI because it's going to vary per rider. And especially if you're putting kit on and going riding out. So there is a level of complexity. Now, if you love tinkering about with that sort of stuff, brilliant. Um, otherwise, just set it at pretty much default. 
I've set it the settings um, that Kuji recommended to me. I've just set it at that. And I've put that in there and it's ridden absolutely fine. No issues at all. I'm not even gonna mess about with it. It's fine. The other thing with it is it's got a lockout function, which is brilliant. So you can lock out the rear shock so it comes solid again. It's like a normal wheel. It's got a little bit of give, but nothing much. It's pretty much locked out. When I got out of the box, that was the issue I had setting that up. Managed to get it inflated, done. The next issue I had, as soon as I started riding it, I've got a rubbing noise coming from somewhere in here. Now, I've been told this won't be a problem moving forward, um, but the inner has got, where this is, obviously it's got a, quite a tight mug guard that runs from the back all the way around to the front. In there somewhere, the tire is just knocking every half turn and it's rubbing the side. Now, King Song did get back to me and, and said, here you go, here's some diagrams, you can cut all these things about um, and cut a bit off the plastic and all this sort of business. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna run it uh, like it is out the box, making a, a terrible noise. In this position, it's a terrible noise. So it's when I'm stood on it, I get the rubbing noise, which um, I'll show you a quick clip now, in fact. <laughs> So there you heard the rubbing noise. That's exactly what I'm talking about. When I fully lock the suspension out, I don't get that noise. Now I've discovered what it is, is actually the shock deforming the inner part of that casing because it's actually hitting it on the way down. It seems to be that. Now if you release that pressure and pull the shock to full extension, you don't get as much rubbing, you get a tiny little bit. Because the tolerance is so tight, um, that's where I've got that issue. Now it shouldn't be an issue moving forward is um, what we've been told. This is a pre-production, it's, um, it's not a prototype, um, it's pre-production, so it's ready to go into production. But when they start mass producing these little issues, they can iron out. Um, so there is that. The other issue I had with it was when I was out on the road with it, I started getting problems when I was trying to go uphill shortly after, so a few miles into the ride, and it was tilting me back. And as soon as I got off it, it was tilting me forward. It tilted the machine forward, so you couldn't ride it anymore. I had to turn it off. And turn it back on again and sort of go down what's going on here it's beeping at me when i checked 70 cent battery 77 percent battery um 29 degrees celsius on the temperature so nothing looked out of the ordinary at all uh, i carried on riding it and it went from 31 percent really rapidly as you'll see on your screen now really rapidly down from 31 30 29 28 27 all the way down to zero in next to no time at all so over about a mile and a half, it lost 31%. Um, and I was actually riding along, and it was tilt me back, but not massively. I was still able to ride along at sort of 12, 13 miles an hour, um, and it just shut off. Um, and crash it went, and it landed on its side, marked up the side a little bit, um, and that's kind of where I was at. I contacted King Song, said, what, 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 is, what on earth is going on here? This is a bit strange, you know, this has just thrown me off. Um, don't know what's going on. It's leaning back when I'm trying to go up hills. It's not overheating. It's got plenty of battery, et cetera, et cetera. They said, just recharge it and go again. So that's what I did. So I recharged it overnight. It was completely dead. Uh, well, pretty much it would turn on so um, and balance. I recharged it overnight and went back on it again to find that partway through the journey, it was showing 100%. I was doing like 13 miles. It was still showing 100%. Turns out that the app that they've been asking you to use, the Darkness Bot app, isn't with this wheel, is not registering battery properly at all. So the battery readout is just all over the place. Um, and this instance, when it's fully charged, it just stuck at 100%, it said 100%, no matter how far, basically it's going 13 miles, it still says 100%. There is a new Kingsong app. So we installed that and it's reading correctly the battery percentage. So the fault I had, fault, with it threw me off the battery gone, um, was in relation to the app being used. So that's just a bit of a warning. Try, if it's available, and it hasn't been available, the Kingsong app, for months. It's finally available again, a new version. Use that app, especially with this wheel, um, to trust the battery percentage. And there is a cautionary word. It's unlike any other wheel I've ridden before. The other wheels tilt you back so far, you can't ride them anymore when the battery runs out. This one tilts you back far enough to carry on riding it until it just, literally runs out of power. Not experienced that on the wheels that I've done any of these unboxing and tests from. I've not experienced it before at all. Ones I've run right down, we sort of stopped running them right completely out. We've been running them down to like 10%. They tilt you back and you can keep going for a certain amount of time. And eventually they just tilt back so far, you just can't stand on it. 
This doesn't do that. In the firmware, it tilts you back and it's beeping at you um, to let you know, which I had no way of let it knowing what that was because when I was doing the readout, it said 70% battery or 30% battery, etc. Thinking, don't know what this beeping's for, don't know, it's not temperature, I can't work this out, don't know what's going on. Um, in this case, it will tilt you back, but it only tilts forward, obviously, which is quite safe, um, when you're off it. Um, so that's just something to look out for. I don't know if they change that over time. It doesn't tilt you back and back and back and back until you can't ride it anymore. This one tilts you back until it's uncomfortable and then you can carry on riding. And eventually you just gotta know it will actually shut off and you'll be, it'll be slamming into the floor and you'll be doing a few runs out. It's, it's, it's a fairly low speed, so I just jogged out of it like that. No issue, um, apart from this smashed into the ground. Keep that in mind, that's experience at this point. Don't forget, look at the date this video was recorded. All of this can completely change no matter where we are. Since it was recharged and I went out for a ride, despite it saying 100% um, the whole entire time, I used 30% of the battery on the second ride out, got it down to 70% according to the King Song app, um, and I've, I've ridden it with no issues whatsoever. It's been fine, still got the rubbing noise. As I say, I'm not gonna sort that out because I actually wanna see where that's gonna leave a mark. And where it leaves a mark, I know exactly which piece of this plastic is, is fouling, basically. Um, so really there's only one issue, which is the rubbing noise. The battery isn't faulty, the BMS isn't faulty, battery management system, that all works fine. It was the application that they used to recommend to use, Darkness Bot, that's why we've been using Darkness Bot, because they didn't have an app, they took it off the um, Apple Store um, and said use Darkness Bot, we've been using that, only to find out actually with this, it's quite inherently dangerous at this point in time. That may change, of course. So overall, how does this wheel handle? And it handles really well off-road, it's really, really good. I haven't found, because of the closeness of that shroud, which keeps all the, the dirt and mud out, I, I thought as soon as you get mud stuck on this wheel, it's gonna get really dicey in there because it's so close, the tolerances are so tight. It's gonna drag mud up and in. Now it isn't winter, it's getting on for summer here now, but that tire that it comes as standard with has not been grabbing, even in the rain we've had, I've gone out after, and it hasn't picked up mud and got stuck in there. A Couple of stones make their way through, it makes you scared a little bit, like flip, what's that noise? and a stone being picked up and carried through, tiny little ones. Um, I've had nothing caught in there, no twigs, no sticks, nothing like that at all, no mud crammed in there, nothing at this point in time. It has to be said, with these extra components, the engineering is incredible. It looks flipping awesome. Um, these are all wear points. So where you've gone from a bog standard wheel, now you've got added complexity, which is added maintenance. Um, where that maintenance schedule is, who knows? I imagine it's going to be a lot less than a mountain bike, full suspension mountain bike, because this is going to be kept clean pretty much the entire time. Um, so only time will tell. And obviously we're going to do a thousand kilometers on this in total, and we'll see if we have any issues during that thousand kilometers. But it handles well on the road, it handles well off-road. The suspension definitely takes the shock out of it. So if you've got knee issues or you've got back issues, or you want to have that comfort of a rolling ride with suspension, then this could be the wheel for you. It covers both. I mean, even if you're riding on road all the time, you're hitting potholes and things like that, this will absorb to that much travel to shock, um, which is pretty impressive, really. And of course it's adjustable. You've got two chambers on it, it's adjustable, and you can lock it out. So you can turn it back into an ordinary wheel, essentially, a solid wheel, pretty much. So front light, the foot plates are huge. So the comfort level from that point of view, brilliant, yeah. Part of the conditioning I found also was the fact that your ankle, or certainly mine, I say yours, you'll be different per person, but my ankle bone essentially touches directly on this part here. Um, and so there's some conditioning involved. Now, there's nothing to be concerned about, but if you're used to riding wheels, um, or this is your first time, it's gonna be conditioning. It's not like you've got strong calves from conditioning over a long period of time for riding wheels. This is unique to this wheel, just by virtue of the shape of the padding, essentially. But it is soft, so, you know, just conditioning, bear with it, you'll get through it. An interesting occurrence I found was under heavy braking in a dead straight line. I first came across this on the road when I was doing the range test. Coming up to a junction, fairly sharpish, pulled on the brakes like I would always would do over all the years I've been riding and the thing wobbled like mad. I mean, I just stayed on and I was like flipping heck. Um, so one thing to remember with speed wobble, we got an, art an article on electricpeople.org. Uh, it's worth checking out. But anyway, there's the 
the wobble, what you need to do at that point is relax um, and usually just accelerate forward a touch, which seems counterintuitive, which of course it is because you're trying to break. But a one way of sharply getting out of it is just to lean forward a touch and it takes the wobble away. Um, braking, of course, if you continue braking, so I had no choice, I couldn't accelerate, I was coming out to a T-junction. So I had to carry on braking and so I just stayed on it with all my might until obviously I was at such a slow speed it wasn't wobbling anymore. But it was, yeah, it was interesting. Now I've had a look at this, I've analysed it and I can make it occur over and over and over again. I can duplicate it. And what it is, is because the side pads, there aren't any as such. There are side pads, but they don't touch high up your leg. So the only real point of contact is your ankles where they're touching in. Um, you can adjust your leg position to counter this under braking, but you couldn't counter it all the time. So you actually need to brace with your legs as you're braking on this machine because there's no pads, so, which is not a major problem. I've just done that ever since, uh, just literally brace differently than you would do normally. And it just involves uh, sort of bringing your uh, legs inwards, essentially, not just left and right movement, but actually twisting them in slightly and then clamping that wheel under heavy braking. And if you can get your ass back as far as possible by crouching and bring it back over the back end of it, you, you dominate that machine then and it doesn't, doesn't wobble between your legs. But it's definitely worth noting if you're used to riding wheels and you go off down the road and slam the brakes on in an emergency, you're gonna get massive tank slap, we call it on motorbikes, but it's that sort of thing. Um, so just be very wary of that. Trial it out in a clear, uh, non-dangerous environment. Give yourself some chance to get used to how it handles. So bring it up to speed, do some heavy emergency braking, just to practice. It's just a different style of riding. There's nothing inherently dangerous about it. It's just that you do need to brace that wheel quite tightly because there are no pads high up that you're constantly touching whilst riding. Now I've noticed you don't get this anywhere near as bad if you're braking on a corner. It's usually when you're straight, because when you're braking on a corner, you tend to be leaning into the machine. At that point in time, your leg is touching the side anyway, so it braces it to a degree. You still get a little bit of a tank slap going on, but nothing like it is in a dead straight line when you're not holding either the left or right of the machine. I hope that makes sense, but yeah, you can kind of see it in action. Um, you know what I'm talking about. I've done it over and over again, and you get the same, the same thing basically going on. So the ride is incredibly smooth. Really, really nice ride. Good delivery of torque. You, yeah, just and it climbs up all the hills, no issues whatsoever. It just it rides really nicely, and it's just nice and quiet, quiet and smooth. Is how I describe it. It's really good, yeah, from that point of view. Of course, one of the things with the suspension is that you can adjust for response time in terms of how much PSI you put in it, so how rigid it is. Now, as was briefly touched on already, is you you can actually upgrade this, so you can get an equivalent fitting shock unit that's got even greater control over it and is even more expensive if you wanted to. So you could play about with that. And you've got to remember that the shock will behave differently depending on the pressure you put in it. So if you're going across like a, a drain um, culvert, I think they're called, aren't they? Like a, 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 a U shape. If you're going across that and it's short and sweet, then the reaction time obviously is, is, is it hasn't really got time to react the shock. Over more abrupt like curbs, uh, it works really, really well and over longer um, longer spread bumps, shall we say. It acts better over cobbled st style roads and rocks and things like that, embedded into the ground. I've had no issues whatsoever. It just it floats over them. It's quite nice from that point of view. Don't expect it to absorb absolutely everything that you throw at it, but it's, it's a marked difference from not having suspension, which is what you'd expect. I mean, there is actually movement there going on. It's constantly compressing and expanding all the time. So it's, it's working away. And you just, you're flying through the forest trails and things like that. It's just, it's constantly working away. So yeah, it definitely makes a difference from that point of view. Just remember, it's all about the setup of it, which is a fine art in itself. So I've had, I've had, a, I've had issues out of the box in terms of the rubbing, the setup of the suspension in terms of inflating it and the battery issues, but with the app. Um, and so those, that was a rough road to start with, actually getting out of that thinking, oh, come on, please be a good wheel. And it is a good wheel. Make sure you use the Kingsong app. Make sure you do some research on setting up your suspension. Um, and I'm told that the rubbing noise on there is not going to be an issue moving forward. Um, you know, they've got to wire these issues out when they're when it's new stuff. It's new stuff, isn't it? So you kind of need to work with that. Uh, and I'm, I'm like you guys watching. When stuff like this comes out, I'm rooting for this thing. I'm like, come on, this is going to be awesome. You've got development, you've got suspension. This is going to be great. 
And, and so when I have these issues of, come on, it's got to be good. It's got to be. Because um, I want these wheels to be awesome. And so I'm just openly and honestly telling you exactly the experiences I've had with this. Um, and this, of course, this is now my wheel. So the monster's been set aside because I've done a thousand kilometers on that. The Gotway V3 monster. Um, and now this is my main wheel until we've done a thousand kilometers. So I will just keep reporting back. Uh, sign up for our Instagram and our Facebook and Twitter, etc. And Google, uh, Google and uh, YouTube. Uh, sign up there to our channel and you'll get behind the scenes photos and stuff like that when I'm out and about. And if you can buy one of these hoodies as well, if you want to, there's the Speedy Feet Tops. There's a load. If you go to Merch on our website, we've got um, all sorts of t-shirts and hoodies and stuff. And so go and check them out. Also check out the Carly range, so the protective range. If you go to Unicycles, drop all the way down, it says protective gear. Go in there. We've got some cracking helmets. Really, really good. Um, amazing, lightweight, which is what you've seen me wear most of the time now, the Carly helmet. Carly written on it. Brilliant. Uh, Californian company. So go and check out all that sort of stuff. Can you smash the like button on this video? It's going to really, really help the channel. It's remarkable. We've been doing it since 2016. Um, we, we're, we're barely hitting it at this, this time of filming. There's 10,000 subscribers. It's like, come on. I see people filming cats with more subscribers than that. We need that subscriber count up. We need the likes up. You get momentum to bring this sort of stuff and this content out to more people. Because even though where I am now, local to the Forest of Dean, where we are and where we ride, you can't go out with people go, what is that? Wow, what is that? How can they not know? Been riding here since 2016. Like everybody needs to know about this. So share the videos, like them. Let's pump the content out there as far and wide as possible. Okay, well, I'm going to crack on and I'm going to try and get 250 kilometers as quick as possible on this wheel so I can bring the next update video and let you know how I've been getting on. Okay, until the next one, I shall see you.